Who was the most popular superhero of the 1940s? Here's a hint, it wasn't Superman. What genre almost killed off comic books in the mid 1950s? What Silver Age superhero saved them? And why are Golden and Silver Age comics so expensive? This video answers all these questions and more in the next eight minutes. Now to the main show. There were comic books before 1938, but it was this book that changed popular culture forever. It's Action Comics number one, the first appearance of Superman published by DC. It introduced the world of superheroes and ushered in the golden age of comics. When it came out, you could have bought this book with a mercury dime. Superman was a huge hit and everybody knew it. Well, half of that's true. Superman was a huge hit, but not everybody knew it at the time. Check out the cover of Action Comics number two. Great cover, but no Superman. Number three, no soups. Action Comics number four, nope. Number five, nope. Number six, uh-uh. Number seven, finally, yes. Superman appears on the cover once again. I should mention that those covers you just saw, Action Comics 2 through 6, while Supes wasn't on the cover, he was in a story in each one of those comics. At the time, comic books usually had several different types of stories in them. DC didn't know why Action Comics was selling so well, so they actually went out and started interviewing kids, and they had several responses, and they were, Superman, 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 Superman. In terms of Superman on the cover, it wasn't until number 19 when he was featured on front every time. Around the same time, DC put out Superman comics number one. Superman number one represents the first time a superhero had the title named after them. But here's what's funny. Number one doesn't appear on the front cover. DC was thinking that this book would be a one shot. This book sold almost a million copies. So DC continued with Superman number two, Superman number three, and so forth. The superhero explosion had officially begun. DC followed suit with other well-known characters. Batman, The Flash, Wonder Woman. In fact, DC came out with the first ever superhero team with Justice Society for America introduced in All-Star Comics number three. As popular as these characters were, it was Fawcett Publications who came out with the biggest star of the 1940s. That's Captain Marvel. Year after year, Captain Marvel books would sell millions of copies over and over and over again. There was one big issue though. DC wasn't happy. They argued that Captain Marvel borrowed, or should I say stole, a lot of ideas from Superman. Check it out. Super strength, yep. Cape, yep. Throwing a car, yes. Look how similar those cars are from Action 1 to Wiz 1, almost identical. Things started getting litigious. After the dust settled, DC won and eventually acquired the rights to Captain Marvel. Let's move on from this legal stuff. Another player came on board during the Golden Age. That's Marvel Comics, at the time known as Time Lee. If you ever wondered about the true origin of the Marvel Universe, it's this book, Marvel Comics number one. Yep, that's a weird looking human torch on the cover. Submariner also made his official debut here. Two years later, Marvel introduced their next big success in bombastic fashion. Hitler's chin was violently introduced to Cap's knuckle sandwich. This cover foreshadowed the US entering World War II a few months later. Speaking of World War II, it was the gasoline that turned the growing superhero flame into an outright inferno. As the old saying goes, heroes are only as good as their arch enemies. And at the time, the Italians, the Germans, and the Japanese served as incredible foils to these new superheroes. The number of comic publishers, the number of superheroes debuting, and the overall comic book sales all were exploding. Superheroes wasn't the only genre of the time. We had westerns, teenage comics, sci-fi, jungle, romance, funny animal, and even funny animal superheroes. And in the late 40s, horror. This genre has a special place in comic history lore. By this time, World War II was over and the sale of superhero comic books was diminishing. Many superhero titles were grasping for dear life and trying to hold on to any gimmick that might help them. Check out this 1950 issue from Captain America Comics. The publisher was trying to keep the series alive by blending in elements of horror. Yep, that's the Red Skull looking like some demonic ghoul. The title only lasted a couple more issues before being canceled. 
On the other hand, horror was alive and well and selling like hotcakes. The more gruesome, the better. See Crime Suspense Stories number 22. Popular and controversial. Parents across the United States were ticked off and offended. So pissed, in fact, that Congress got involved. As a result, the comic book authority was created. It was an oversight mechanism that provided a review for all comic books that would hit the newsstand. If a character was drawn in too much peril, perhaps a bead of sweat going down the brow, then that book would be sent back to the publisher and the artist would have to change it to make it more wholesome. The pendulum had swung too far the other way. Amidst the public relations nightmare, publisher after publisher folded. In fact, even Stan Lee was this close to leaving the comic book industry. Would the curtains finally close on comic books and superheroes? Well, it turned out the savior was quick to the scene, literally. In 1956, a reimagined Flash ran off the film and onto the page. Showcase number four launched the silver age of comic books and took superheroes off of life support. It was five years later, however, in 1961, that set forth the stage for the Marvel comics that we know and love. Fantastic Four number one. The version of Marvel you see today in movies and on TV is related to this book and the universe it created. It was followed by the Hulks, and I want you to look at the price. It's changed. It's 12 cents now. In fact, in 1962, when Hulk 1 came out, the price changed from 10 cents for comic books to 12 cents. And for many people, this is how we roughly tell if it's a golden or a silver age book. Most of the time, it's 10 cents, golden age. And most of the time, if you see 12 cents, it's Silver Age. Check out these other Marvel keys that debuted in the Silver Age. Spider-Man, Iron Man, X-Men 1, Avengers 1, and many other Marvel greats. It's around this point that people really got into collecting comic books. No longer were they read and then instantly disposed of. Now that people were keeping their books and respecting them, ironically, these books appreciated less over time than their older counterparts. That brings us back to the question, why are most valuable comic books from the golden and silver ages? They had two things going for them. The first is notability. Collectors love first appearances of well-known characters, and there were scores in the golden and silver ages. Second, books from these periods survive in relatively low numbers. Putting this all together, when you have this huge demand for well-known first appearances of superheroes in low supply, that makes these books really expensive. Let me talk a little bit more about the scarcity and rarity of Golden and Silver Age books, and I'll compare that to books that came out a little later. I'm cherry picking a bit, but let's look at the CGC census counts of a few well-known comic books from 1938 to the early 1990s. The books from the 30s and early 40s are so tough, often with census counts below 100, in the early and mid 50s, we see books having counts of several hundred. And in the 60s, you can start seeing the numbers rise almost year to year. Collecting, truly taking a foothold. The 70s, the 80s, and the 90s, forget about it. Some of these books still have value like Hulk 181, but it's because they are so popular. And I stress for a book to have you know, 15 or 20,000 copies on CGC Census, and to still sell for a lot of money, it means that demand must be ridiculously high for that book. There's also a third factor that affects the value of a comic book that we haven't talked about yet. And if you wanna learn more about pricing comic books, check out this video. Thanks so much for watching and I uh, hope to see you around real soon.